afternoon and a really warm welcome to this special occasion, a memorial concert for Bob. And we're delighted to see you all here this afternoon and to have so many wonderful musicians on stage representing 16 different bands. Put together for the first time as Bob's Banding All Stars. <laughs> so before we go any further with the proceedings, I think we should let them get this show on the road with our opening number, A Fabulous March by George Wilcox for The Champions. from people wanting to pass on their condol condolences. That's a lot of likes. So today is a celebration of Bob's life, family and favourite music. A chance to look back fondly and to finally enjoy a get together to remember him. Before we go any further, I'd like to say a special welcome to Bob's nearest and dearest, his wife Sandra, stepson Lee, and to his children, Tony, Gary, Della, and their mum, Marilyn, and grandchildren, Matthew, Charlie, Jake, Luke, Tilly, Dan, Daisy, Molly, and Rosie, and the rest of the family members who are here today. Music played such a huge part in Bob's life, and his passion for music was shared by many of his family members, and it's just fantastic that two of his grandchildren are here in the band today. Charlie on baritone and Stan on bass trombone. <laughs> and it's equally fitting 
interesting that the first of six conductors this afternoon will be fighting over the baton is his eldest son, Johnny.
Okay, so this afternoon's concert is going to be in three sections, so there'll be plenty of time to get to the bar in between. Um, during the second section, I'm going to tell you more about Bob's life, and during the last section, I'll be sharing with you some of the memories of his friends and family here today, and there'll be a very special presentation. Our programme of music today has been carefully chosen, and all these pieces have some special connection to Bob. They were all his favourites. The next two pieces you're going to hear, however, are arrangements by Bob himself. I think these show you just what talent he had. Bob had not had the benefit of any formal training in music, no lessons in arranging, or access to the technology we have today, which helps enormously when you're putting together an arrangement. I think as every musician in the room knows, it's one thing playing the dots in front of you, but starting with a blank piece of paper and arranging music requires skill on a different level. So what Bob clearly had was a good pair of ears, an eye for a great melody, and a heart full of music. And that leads me beautifully into the first of his arrangements, James Lass, Happy Heart.
Quilting the Band, and now it's time to introduce, introduce our first soloist of the day, his sister, Della. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Della is undoubtedly one of the leading single horn players in the brass band movement. Whoa. 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 <laughs> right there, Della. She's currently a member of the Gus Band based in Northampton and travels many miles each week from her home in Newark to rehearse with them. Della was a musician in the military for seven years, travelling the world and performing as a member of the band of the RAF College at Cranwell. Before all of this though, Della was a rising star in a local village band by the name of Poynton Band. And uh, yes, we just down the road. And I think I'm correct in saying that Bob arranged this next piece for her to play during her many years with Pointer. <coughs> Dallas performed it many times and it was featured on the Pointer album Point and Plays, which was recorded I think in around 1976. Obviously Della was the apple of her father's eye. Sorry, Gary, Tony. <laughs> this is a love song written by Randy Goodrum and made famous by the singer Anne Murray. I'm delighted that Tony's going to hand the baton to the next of our you know, conductors today, which is me. So please give a warm welcome to Bella to perform You Need With Me.
Well, that certainly takes me back as well to the days in the and band. And good days they were too. This next piece will bring back memories for many of us also. And it's going to give the white boys a chance to shine alongside their sister. We worked out that the three of them first played, played this piece back in 1977 at Scotland Town Hall with the fairy band. The three of them, that's a clue for <laughs> Tony, of course, was the principal cornet of Point and Band. I thought it was always going to be really that short, has it not changed a bit? No, I know, I know. <laughs> Point and, uh, sorry, Tony was, of course, the principal of uh, Point and Band for over 25 years, and he also played for the fairy band alongside his dad before swapping his cornet for a baton. He's currently the musical director of Still Brass. Meanwhile, baby of the family, Gary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Joined the band of the Coldstream Guards, aged just 16. And then the Central Band of the RAF, as well as the RAF Regiment Band at Cranwell. Gary also now conducts Newark Town Band. So, with Trumpet Wild, Trumpet Wild, here is the reunion, The Wyatts.
to one of Ghana's most lasting musical legacies, Stockport School's Brass Band. Back in 1978, the idea for a youth band in Stockport was hatched by members of Stockport School's Music Teachers Association. Auditions took place at the end of the summer term at Stockport College. And by the end of that first weekend, two bands had been formed and they performed their first concert. Fair to say they completely knocked it out of the park. I know because I was fortunate enough to be there. I think it exceeded everyone's expectations. Bob, along with Cliff Colwell, Mike Reeves, Ken Thomas and Helen Paul, went on to establish a youth organisation that achieved so much and is still going strong more than 40 years later. Bob continued as MD of the band until 1995, giving 17 years of broken service. Inspiring young people to play music is something that Bob did really well. And part of that is knowing what repertoire to challenge them with. Music that they'll enjoy and will help them to progress. A blockbuster movie soundtrack is always a great choice. And John Williams' theme music from the film E.T. is one of the best and was always a firm favourite with those at the school band. So during the break, there'll be raffle tickets on sale if you haven't already got them, and of course a chance to top up on your refreshments as well. The family really hopes that you'll have time to catch up with some old friends, and maybe make some new ones too. But before that, to conduct our final piece, please welcome Tony back.
quiet. <laughs> but uh, we're taking this through a rounding march with Alfred, uh, which celebrated the many military marches of one of the greatest British composers of marches, Kenneth Alfred. I'm going to tell you a bit more about the life and banding times of Bob Wyatt. Born in 1938 in Eastham, Bob attended Swan Lane Primary, then went on to Prince Pat Henry's Grammar. Despite coming from a non musical family and having no brass band connections, he joined Avon Bank Brass Band, and that's where it all started. In 1971, Bob applied to join Fairies, got the job, and trained as an engineer at the Stockport based firm. He moved his young family up north and embarked on his new job and a 15 year spell as baritone player for the Fairy Band. This was an exceptional era for the Fairy Band, conducted by the mighty Atom, Walter Hargreaves. Bob was part of a golden team which took top honours at the British Open and were twice crowned champions at Granada Band of the Year, which was held at Bellevue during that period. We're delighted to have a number of Bob's colleagues from Fairies during that area sat amongst Bob's all-star band today. And I'd like to introduce them to you. So in the corner section, if you'd like to stand up, we've got Brian Taylor. From the bass section, we have Sean Crowler. Yeah. And it really is lovely to have them all playing here to with us today. So for our next piece... It's just to be here, really. It is a bit It's lovely to have you here, it's our show. Honestly. For our next piece, which is Blade and Races, we welcome back Gary Sitting Duck. This piece has been a regular on the Stockport Schools Band program over the years and brought many a euphonium soloists to the fore. Today we have one of those players back to do it all over again. Former Schools Band principal euphonium, Matt Hill.
Well, what a truly stunning, powerful piece of music that, that is. Um, I'm sure a few bottom of the quivering then about to reach its crescendo. Lovely playing. So in the next excerpt from Bob, Bob's text, he talks about his ambitions. He says, As a young teenager playing in a youth band, it was my ambition, together with a few of my friends at the time, to one day be good enough to play in one of the top section bands in the country. Although my own band had graduated from fourth section to third section, I was still very envious of the players who played in the finest bands in the country. I stayed with my local band for some years, working in the engineering industry and spending most of my spare time playing in the band. In 1971, I applied for a job with Fairies and together with an audition for a place in the band. And that's when all my playing dreams came true. Playing with all the best instrumentalists in the country, doing radio and TV broadcasts and recordings, and playing most of the famous concert halls in the country, and best of all, the trips abroad. I travelled extensively with Fairy to Canada, Hong Kong, and throughout Europe. I think that gives a sense of pride that he felt in being a member of the Fairy Band and how much it really meant to him. Bob had a funny story to tell about our next piece and one of his bandmasters at the time was Leonard Lamb, who had a very bad habit of dropping his H's when he spoke. This was a source of embarrassment to the band members, apparently, because when he was introducing pieces to the audience, um, he dropped his H's, and the band leader decided that he had to be told about this. So he took him to one side and said, look, Leonard, you're doing a great job conducting the band, but I really think you should practice your speaking so that you sound your H's in the right place. He took this on board, and at the very next concert, everything was going really well. And so he introduced the next item, a horn solo, a very hard solo, called horror staccato. And to play it, we please welcome a young man called Gordon Higginbottom. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. <laughs> Well, here, he, his, indeed. Please welcome conductor number four. We've got one of the leading, most successful, and most highly respected brass band conductors in the country here. This gentleman's trained and led the best bands in the land and won too many contests to mention, both at home and abroad. To put the band through its paces at full throttle, and especially for the back row cornet, we're going to hear horror staccato. Please give a very warm welcome to our maestro, Gary Cutt.
Uh, Tony Matlow just said thanks very much for choosing that one on today's programme. We were really pleased with that. <laughs> a really tricky piece to play. Well done to the band. Well done to the band. Bob certainly had a good sense of humour. I just saw Tony, obviously. <laughs> Always smiling and enjoying the antics, the antics of his fellow banders. He recalled one memorable performance with fairies at Buxton Pavilion. When the band finished their program with the 1812 overture, complete with cannon shots, Ray Talkington, aka Talkie, was on percussion, and it was his job to set up the technical side of the finale. Little did he know that there were two sorts of theatrical bangers ones that uh, did plumes of smoke and flashes, and ones that did flashes and bangs. And of course, Talkie got it wrong. And as the cannons went off, the band was enveloped in plumes of smoke. <laughs> they madly carried on playing whilst wiping their eyes and trying to see the music. <laughs> to top it off, Torky got a bill for £85 on his desk the following day for repair of cracked windows in the pavilion. <laughs> Bob thought this was hilarious. <laughs> so we're going to carry on now uh, with another of Bob's arrangements. All I know about this one is that it's one of his earlier arrangements. It's called Without You, and if anybody can tell me at the end of the piece who it was that sang it and made, made it famous, I'd be really grateful. So just hold that thought while you listen to Without You. <laughs>
Wilson. Wilson. Ah, right, okay. Now we know. All right, Carrie. Into the junior place. Wilson. Okay, so without you, and that reminds us of some of the friends of the family and stalwarts of the grass standing movement that we have lost recently. We're thinking now especially of Alan Lawton, Eileen Murphy and Roy Maddox, who are really missed and would have loved to have been on the front row here today. I have no doubt they'd have been sat here alongside Bob, drinking drink in hand and putting the world of Ross Band into rights. So, I'd like to make a toast. Please, would you join me in making a toast to those, to those who are very much in our thoughts today. If you've got a glass or a cup of tea, I'd like to take it in your hand and raise it to absent friends. Thank you. And the band would like to dedicate the next piece to all of our absent friends, and it's one of Bob's and many people's all-time favourites with Stockport School's Brass Band. It was played at most concerts, so let's hear it once again. It's John Miles' music.
today who all have connections at some point with Bob. Um, so we've travelled many miles to be here. We've got Stan coming from Chidworth and Charlie coming up from Bristol. Uh, Kevin come from Northern Ireland and Ian's come from North Wales, I believe. Um, and we've actually got 16 bands represented. So I'll just tell you about the bands that are here on stage, got representation on stage today. We've got Silkgrass, Desperate, Dust, Fairies, Grindthorpe, VBS Pointers, Ashton of the Line, Marple, Bonington, Mosley, Hazel Grove, Bess's Boys, Steadfast Band from Dublin, the British Army, Tidworth, and of course, Stockport School's Bass Band. And I hope we've not missed anybody. <laughs>
excellent and really well played, thank you. Um, Helen Carl is here today, who's the uh, original Stockport Schools Brass Band Administrator. She's come up from the Midlands to be with us today. And a couple of weeks ago, I asked her for um, some thoughts of, of Bob as well. And she said, Bob was a people person, genuinely interested in people, and always concerned to do the right thing. He was fair, he set high standards, but was very reasonable. He didn't preach, but if something needed to be said, he said it how it was. And then he was very forgiving. And this earned him great respect, especially from the young people in Stockport Schools Band. He was good at dealing with kids, he had all the qualities of a good teacher. He wanted young players to reach their potential, but above all, to have a great time. And as one of those players, we did, we had a great time. Okay, so, also, Bob enjoyed the big band music as well. Um, he listened to James last a lot, and I think you'll have heard some of that coming through in, in his writing, the style, the big band style. And you're going to hear it again in this next piece. It's going to feature the trombone section called Hot Toddy. Mm.
Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. It's all good. Um, yeah, I just thought, I'd, on behalf of me and uh, Tony, because I don't think, I don't think you're going to talk, are you? So they left it to me. Um, but, you know, I think yesterday I was having panic, little panic sessions, thinking that people were going to turn off. <laughs> but obviously, I, I didn't need to worry, did I? Because it was all, we're having a fantastic time. And uh, Brian, Brian just said to me, can we do this every year? Because he really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, um, so, yeah, so it's just really, yeah, the planning to do this together. We've had, you know, all sorts of Zoom meetings over the last six months or so. But really, since Dad died, you know, straight away we sort of decided that we wanted to do something when we were allowed to. So here we are, we're all here today. And also, um, so thanks, really, thanks. I think you all deserve a clap just to come turn out today. And the other thing we really wanted to do was to sort of um, have something made in sort of memory of Dad. Um, and what, so what we decided was that we'd uh, have a trophy made, a bespoke trophy, should I say. Um, so a good friend of mine, Dennis, the chap who sits on the front row at GOS's carpenter, so he, uh, he's uh, made this trophy for us and we've sort of put a, a design on it which hopefully um, will be recognised, especially with Stockport Schools Brass Band, a Stockport uh, iconic feature with my duct. And um, so we've had this trophy made and we want to present it to the band today. Uh, and this is going to, it's called the Bob Wyatt Memorial Trophy and it's going to be for the most improved player of the year. And we've got sort of lots of uh, things on there so it, so it could be engraved, you know, over 20 odd times plus. Uh, as many as, as needs to be. So, uh, so I'd like to introduce Ian Campbell. I think he's here somewhere. <coughs> Ian, who's the, tra the chairman of Stockport Schools Brass Band. And I'd like to uh, pre um, present this trophy to you. Ian. Just wanted to mention 
that July 2023 is our 45th anniversary. So please put July in your diary. We'll be coming out to you all sometime next year, just checking on contact details and coming out with the final date. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to Tony Gary Dower and thank you Bob. Well, you agree, that's a, a lovely uh, gesture there, um, and I think that'll go, you know, sort of schools every year. When somebody's presented with that, they'll be so proud, and uh, I'm sure lots of the children will aspire to, to be winners of that shield going forward, so a great idea. Okay, carrying on with the music, this is another of Bob's arrangements, and it's called Can't Smile Without You.
It's just a real quick um, thank you for, um, I know there's been a lot of thanks today to everybody, but someone who hasn't been thanked is Louise. Fantastic. You know, these things don't just happen, and I know you need to put hours and hours of work into it, so um, it's just a quick moment to say thank you very much. Well, we come to our final piece on today's program, although you might have a long call up the sleeve if you scream loud enough. <laughs> I would like to say thank you to Tony, Gary and Della and all Bob's family for inviting us here today and for organising this special afternoon. I'm sure I speak, I speak for everyone here when I say how much we've enjoyed ourselves. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> and I hope you've paid a wonderful tribute to Bob as well. On behalf of everyone, I'd also like to thank all the musicians who are playing today and the conductors who have taken to the stage today. Not bad for a scratch band with no rehearsal. Thank <laughs> you. 